February City Span is coming at you with news, notes, and in-depth features for you. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And laws of Georgia. The laws of Georgia. We have a new top cop. We'll take you to Chief Revenue swearing in and sit down with him one-on-one -on -one to get his goals for SPD. Speaking of police, some of Savannah's finest saved a life. The harrowing details from these local heroes. A groundbreaking and a ribbon cutting. Savannah Police Department is moving forward. It's our top priority. We will help you identify the others. It's our branding message from public safety to good government and in between. It's an ID class for you. It's also the essence of our reorganization, the chiefs in charge and what it means to our city. From Twickenham down to the Truman, the Windsor Forest, our neighborhood revitalization stories and more. City Span is set to bring it to you next on SGTV. And welcome to City Span. Ken Slats here to steer you through the show that is your source for news and information in and about the city of Savannah. We will start with changes with our top cop. Chief Joseph Lunkin left for Metro Atlanta, so the city of Savannah landed Pooler's retiring chief. I, Mark Revenue, I, Mark Revenue. Do, you swear, do you solemnly swear? This is an honor. I mean, who wouldn't jump at a chance? I mean, it, the, most chiefs come into a department that's broken, needs repair. I'm taking one that's, that's run, it's a nationally and state accredited agency. Um, I think they have the respect of the community. The level of professionalism is as is, is high as um, I've ever seen a police department. It's the groundwork that's been laid for the past few years by Chief Lumpkin. One chief revenue plans to keep steering in that same direction. A police chief's only as good as the relationship they have with the community and the businesses. If you don't have that, you have nothing. And so I've seen the, the ebbs and flows of the respective uh, departments in this area. And yeah, they've had some dark hours. Um, it doesn't mean people weren't doing good things. They just had some black eyes that were blemishing the accomplishments. Chief Revenue's accomplishments date back to 1984 when he joined the Pooler Police Department. In 2002, he became assistant chief and in 2010 took over the department after the untimely death of his mentor, Chief Butch Chan. He had this amazing knack that I grabbed from him. Um, he could talk to a homeless guy the same way he talked to a mayor. And he, um, how you doing today? And, and listen, not talk, listen. And um, he had that ability to break down these barriers from people from all walks of life. And it was, a, it was an amazing skill. Revenue is in the position for an undetermined amount of time, just until the city finds a permanent replacement, most likely between six and eight months. He clearly has defined goals. Make sure that we get in front, we maintain our integrity, make sure we maintain our transparency. You know, I tell my officers, the, the ones I've worked with, I have a motto, um, treat it like a campground, leave it better than you found it. And, and if we did that with every incident, we did that with every situation, we can't do anything but be successful. Savannah Chatham Metro's finest were the first on the scene for a house fire in the early morning of January 12th. For the 90 seconds after they arrived, their training took over. 56-year-old Anthony Young was grateful. I had my faith, I had my family, and I had the brothers that are standing behind me. Officer Hood led the trio from SCMPD to the 1100 block of Augusta Avenue. Once we got there, we immediately saw that the house was engulfed in smoke and in flames. Um, there were two people outside the residence. They were actually coming out of the house when we first got there, and we were coming up the steps as there was someone still in the house, and they said, yeah, my dad's still in the house, he went back in. All three of us began yelling inside the residence, trying to get who was ever inside to come out. Hey, come, hey, come out! Uh, we began breaking out some of the windows with our batons. Our uh, thought process was we want him to hear the glass breaking and make his way toward the glass. Officer Tolliver and Officer Brown uh, kicked in the front door. The flames and smoke just shot out the house, uh, not, almost knocked me and Officer Brown over. Um, at that point in time, Officer Hood, it allowed him to see. A lot of the smoke that was around the side entrance of the house where I was at was relieved and went out their side. When that happened, I looked inside and I could see the silhouette of the gentleman standing inside the doorway, about two to three feet inside. When he didn't respond to my commands, I took a few steps inside of the doorway. I helped him to the ground and I began dragging him out. 
By this time, officers Brown and Tulliver were joined by Board of Education officer and part-time SCMPD officer Anthony Bryant. They made it to the side entrance and helped pull the 56-year-old to safety. Once we got him out of the house, our goal was to keep him talking and alert. Because we did see that he was burnt severely. Um, of course, he was trying to um, get comfort as well. Uh, once we did that, uh, we were just waiting on the EMS and fire to arrive. Which was moments later. These four officers epitomize public safety officers in the city of Savannah, a team of many. I'm just thankful to have the officers that I work with every day um, with me, uh, and we, we can come to the best decision at that time. Anytime you save a life, it's a relief because the last thing you want to do is uh, know that someone got killed in a fire or any kind of um, emergency incident. The situation we went through earlier this morning, uh, Yak would consider us as heroes because we got there fast, did the best we could do to get in the house, and we got him out. My training kicked in, my instincts kept, kicked in. In fact, anybody wearing the Savannah Metropolitan Police Department badge without, without hesitation would have done the exact same thing we did. Anthony Young is still in the burn center in Augusta in critical condition. Savannah Mayor Eddie Deloach, several aldermen, city staff, guests, and police officers gathered together on the block east of MLK between 33rd and 34th Streets. It's the much-anticipated groundbreaking of the new Central Precinct to be built from the ground up. It'll be more than 13,000 square feet, provide a large squad room, more office space, a community meeting room, and much, much more. And this is the first new police building that we've ever built. Uh, apparently the police barracks on Habersham Street were originally built as, as military barracks. So this is terrific. This is a, a real move forward in a week of a lot of new things happening with the Savannah Police Department. The Central Precinct is in the most densely populated area in our entire city. More people will be touched by this precinct than anywhere else in our community. And beloved, believe it or not, our police officers do deserve a wonderful, clean, state-of-the-art place to be able to deploy their resources, to be able to do their work, and we're so glad to finally be able to deliver that to them. Construction starts immediately. It's a project paid for by voter-approved SPLOS 5 funds. Meanwhile, over on Savannah's east side, Victory Drive, just east of Skidaway Road, the city has leased space for a new east side precinct. The ribbon cutting was attended by Mayor Deloach, several aldermen, city staff, guests, and police officers. This precinct will serve the area south of President Street, east of Waters, over to Thunderbolt, and north of Duran. It's in place and functioning for the Savannah Police Department. Another move, making sure public safety stays at the forefront of council priorities. We will do what we need to do to make sure our officers have the best and, and are treated the best so that we can make sure we take care of the citizens of Savannah. Thank staff for locating this fine strategically placed location. And together, we're going to fight crime. We're going to eliminate it as much as we can. The city also unveiled the new SUV with the Savannah Police Department logo and new look. $140 million, that's the estimate for the new arena the city of Savannah is building. That's the arena itself. It doesn't include the entire Canal District project. So it's, it's huge and that, that probably eclipses you know, any other CIP project we've done uh, by at least double, maybe triple. The project is large enough to have its own director focusing solely on arena development. Pete Shanka will focus on the details of physically getting this project underway. And then we need to nail down what is the program for the arena. So how many seats, um, you know, what kind of food service, uh, how many luxury boxes, all those sorts of things that are going to go in this building before we really go down to, you know, get down to design and construction. We've seen examples or renderings. These were more broad in scope to sort of set the stage. It was more about this is what it could possibly look at and kind of trying to look at the scale of it in relationship to the Waterworks building, which is in, on that site. Now, whether it sets next to the Waterworks building or not is you know, something that 
a designer is going to have to work out at the end of the day and we're going to you know, do some public outreach and see what the public's input on that is. Public input has been a big part since the very beginning. Chonka and his crew having already met with local residents. You know, one thing they're concerned about is the, the traffic and everything that you're going to have. Um, they're interested in the economic opportunities that, that uh, will be created by the development there. And that's another thing that, that's going to be a huge part of this is um, you know, workforce development, working with our partners, our various partners, our, our contractors for the work that they're doing for the city, but also uh, private development contractors. Can we get them on board with helping us develop um, workforce? I would love to have some early site work going on at, at this time next year. The project management team to join the city and work with Pete will be named very shortly. All right, we need to take a quick break. A little bit of history coming down in Windsor Forest. A trip down memory lane for this former community pool and skate park. Plus, you may have noticed a change for the city online. The new website is beaming worldwide. But straight ahead, Savannah's top five priorities. The what, where, and why you'll see them graphically depicted throughout the city. It's next on City Bank. We live in a fast-paced world, so keep up with your local news, information, and happenings around town with the City of Savannah. Updates, tidbits, and breaking news. The City of Savannah on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We give it to you straight, complimented by a library of videos, both on Facebook and YouTube. Informing the public, celebrating milestones, introducing you to the people of our town. The City of Savannah, using social media to be at your service. Welcome back to CitySpan. Remember to check us out online, savannahga.gov. We also have you covered on Facebook and Twitter to keep you in the know. You'll be seeing icons like these throughout CitySpan. You'll also see them throughout the city's social media campaign and in other publications. It is the focus, the priorities of the city. In a sense, it is Savannah Forward. Each one of the icons you know, has a specific meaning, and I, and I think that they're very easy to understand. Liz Tashiro, Savannah's Strategic Initiatives Manager, is tasked with keeping Savannah moving forward. If you're someone that's concerned about public safety, if you, if you look for the public safety goal, um, the, the symbol, which is the shields of our police force and our um, fire service, you're immediately going to be drawn to that's something that's important for me to look at. That's the first of our city priorities, reducing crime. That's safety for residences, businesses, and guests. Infrastructure at, at a very high um, goal level is repaving of our streets. Sidewalks, again, are another, another component. We want to either install more, more sidewalks and then obviously uh, repair the ones that we're, that we're working on. Which leads right into the third priority, or icon, you'll see frequently. And that could mean um, community centers, uh, recreation centers. We also have blight in some of our neighborhoods and we really want to work on that with the owners of the properties, whether they're residential or commercial. With our economic strength, we want to diversify our economy so that it captures a lot of uh, different levels of, of work. It also includes assessing our, our business corridors. What employment types are missing there that could benefit our neighborhoods? And the last of the five icons is the vision of City Hall. That's good government. Main things that our city manager really wants is to be recognized as a high performing uh, government. So do we have efficient technology and services and processes so that we can serve our, our, again, our residents, our businesses, and our guests at the highest level. One of the city's priorities in the strategic plan is good government. The city is working to improve services to the community and streamline the way we do business. In part, the city restructured the organization and appointed three chiefs directly working with the city manager. Here's Michelle Gavin with more. 2,500 people work for the city of Savannah. That includes police officers, firefighters, trash collectors, the water and sewer crews, engineers, designers, parks and rec staff, budget and finance. It's a long list. Now those employees fall under the city manager and his five chiefs. The police chief, fire chief, 
and new this year, a Chief Operating Officer, a Chief Infrastructure and Development Officer, and a Chief Community Services Officer. Each of those service centers have a different perspective and a different need. And so I found that it was important to have one key executive officer overseeing those functions um, and also making sure that they have enough horsepower such that they can um, move and uh, resources within this organization, move resources always, and individuals always, always outside of this organization and work very closely with the other executive officers in order to make things, in order to, to get things done. We were lucky that we had all of these individuals already within the city um, and so we were lucky to be able to promote those individuals and not have to go outside. Marty Johnson is the city's chief operating officer. She's been with the city 15 years and has the knowledge, skills, and abilities to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the city's key business units. She will oversee the city's programs and services relating to customer service 311 call center, special events coordination and film permitting, human resources, financial services including purchasing, accounting, risk management, and revenue, information technology, fleet services, and real estate services. Taffany Young is the city's chief community services officer. Young will lead the city's agencies dedicated to improving our neighborhoods and enriching the lives of our residents. Reporting to the community services officer, the code compliance department, arts, culture, and historical resources, sanitation, parks and recreation, housing and neighborhood services, and human services. Young's successful career with the City of Savannah started in 1993 as a neighborhood services coordinator. She holds a master's degree in public administration from Georgia Southern University. Keith Lloyd is the city's chief infrastructure and development officer. Lloyd will lead the city's agencies dedicated to improving our infrastructure, mobility, greenscapes, permitting, urban design, and water resources. The divisions that report to this office include sustainability, capital projects management, development services, mobility and parking services, public works and water resources, which includes greenscapes. Lloyd's career with the City of Savannah began in 2006. He holds a master's degree in public administration and civil engineering, along with a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. They have to have the drive and the desire to do outstanding things for this organization. Um, they also have to be individuals that are well respected in the community and also well respected within the organization. They know how to be, they, they need to know how to talk to folks, how to lead folks, how to mentor folks, um, because ultimately their job is to get things done. Over the next few months on CitySpan, you're going to get to know these chief officers a little bit better and find out what plans they have to keep moving Savannah forward. For CitySpan, I'm Michelle Gavin. Part of the new reorganization was a fresh look across the board, so the city completely renovated its website, savannahga.gov. Here's our Saja Hours tangled in Savannah's web. So there's a brand new look and feel to savannahga.gov, the city's official website. We've just launched a freshly redesigned site with the goal of giving you easy and convenient access to the information and services you need most. When designing the new site, we looked at a variety of analytics to learn more about how people were using the old site. We used this data to guide us in the decision-making process throughout the redesign. From navigation options to the graphic buttons on the home page, our goal was to create a more accessible and intuitive site design. One of the biggest changes with the new website is that it's responsively designed. This means that content will respond dynamically to the screen size you're viewing the site on. So whether you visit us on a desktop or on your phone, you'll find an improved user experience all around. We hope you'll take a moment to check out the new savannahga.gov. If you come across any bugs we missed or have suggestions for how we can continue to improve the site, please let us know by visiting savannahga.gov slash website feedback. Tangled in Savannah's web, I'm Saja Hours. Plenty of neighborhood revitalization going on on Savannah's south side, specifically Windsor Forest, where the anchor community facility for a half a century the local pool and a short time a skate park came tumbling down. 
bittersweet feelings because it was such a part of the original neighborhood. The, de the Delta Group that designed Mr. Robinson had this wonderful idea, Windsor Forest. Legacy memories here for a lot of folks uh, with the Windsor Forest neighborhood. Um, you know, it coming down, uh, you kind of have some reflections and memories of all of that. The swim team usually was number one in the city. It was so a part of their life. Against neighborhoods like Mayfair, JEA, um, Isle of Hope. So there, were, there was a lot of community involvement here. Getting this all out of here, getting, uh, getting this site cleaned back up, and then preserving the site for, a future, uh, for future use. Future use could mean a new community center. The land is owned by the city, along with six acres behind the old pool site, which is already seeing revitalization. Which will include a walking trail, dog parks, uh, a playground for the kids, benches. But the big thing is, it's going to be a place where people can come and uh, just enjoy all the foliage and the trees and the outside. Which is one of Savannah's main priorities, neighborhood revitalization, directly affecting residents, young and old. Oh, I think it's going to be the central focus again. We have Tribble Park, which has a wonderful pond for fishing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. There are two different types of parks. I look at it as a Windsor Forest improvement, but it's also a regional improvement, which will help to draw people from other neighborhoods uh, into this community and provide services and resources that we aren't doing currently in other parts of uh, this district and other parts of the city. The park behind the old pool is a FEMA lot, a full park expected to be completed by the final quarter of 2018. Next up on City Span, we'll shine a spotlight on a new local landscape company taking valuable advice from our local SBAC. Plus, more neighborhood revitalization will take you to Twickenham. But as we head to break, it's Black History Month, and our archives department is joining in on the educational opportunity. We wanted to celebrate that by sharing some of the um, unique items that are in the city's municipal archives collections and highlight those throughout the month. All of the items that I'm showing you are from different um, parts of the WW Law collection. Um, over on this side of the table, we have two items from our periodicals collection. These are issues from Garrison's Liberator newspaper. Um, we have the very first issue from 1831 of the Liberator, and this was an anti-slavery publication. So it was very popular with the African-American population, but in the South, particularly unpopular. On the right here, you have an issue from 1865, so during the height of the Civil War. Um, not only was he promoting anti-slavery, um, but he was also promoting women's rights, so that was really interesting. This is a poetry book by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Um, he would just la um, was alive for 33 years, so not only does it have Paul Lawrence Dunbar's poetry, but it has lots of beautiful photographs depicting African American life um, in the 1890s in Virginia. This is Captain Willie Macon it's in um, around 1953 stationed in Korea and you see him here with the Korean family next to their chicken coop. So given the political climate right now we thought a picture from Korea um, and one of our soldiers was interesting. Mr. Law was a big button collector and many of the pictures you see him wearing buttons and this is um, a six buttons from his collection that all speak to um, efforts to sort of promote that black is beautiful, black is positive. So all of these materials and much more is available through the city's municipal archives and we've made the information um, and the inventories about the collection available on our website, savannahga.gov slash municipal archives. Smart people agree, litter is stupid. It is dirty, it's filthy. They can blow away and they can make a big mess. It might get washed into the ocean. You just put it in the garbage truck. Put it in the trash can! Right here. Litter makes your neighborhood trashy. Littering is against the law. Litter is stupid. It drives us stupid. It's stupid! Welcome back to City Span. I'm your host, Ken Slats. Last month, Council passed an ordinance designed at curbing the proliferation of stray shopping carts in our community. Uh, we began working with the merchants. We held uh, two stakeholder meetings 
um, to bring merchants to the table to talk about the fact that we were looking at developing a shopping cart ordinance that would require the merchants and the store owners to retain their carts on their property. Now the new ordinance requires that any merchant with 10 or more shopping carts must provide a cart prevention and removal plan. Now, if the city has to remove the carts, the merchant will be charged a recovery fee. So if we have to go and pick up a cart, it's $250 for that first cart. If on that same pickup you have, say you have four carts, then we'll charge you $250 for the first one and then it will be $125 for each cart that we have to pick up in that first recovery. The new ordinance will take effect June 1st with enforcement beginning 60 days after that. Now, this will allow stores ample time to make changes in their business practices. Between now and then, we hope that the um, businesses be more mindful and making sure that their carts um, are back on their premises, that they use their staff or their management teams to make sure the carts come back, that they spend time educating. One of the things I know that one of the aldermen brought up is that there were no signs on the stores um, or the business fronts just reminding people to not take the carts off the premises. Um, there are a lot of cart corrals that you see on stores. Um, some stores have more problems than others with carts leaving their premises. And I think this will just heighten awareness of everyone involved that shopping carts should not be at our bus stops, they should not be on our city right away, and they definitely shouldn't be in our ditches and our drains. You can get more information on the new shopping cart ordinance by calling 912-652-3822 or by visiting our website, savannahga.gov. The Small Business Assistance Corporation is a valuable resource for those wanting to start or expand a business. Through their Small Business Resource Center on Liberty Street, SBAC provides loans, counseling, training, and more to small business owners and entrepreneurs in Savannah. Here's Leandria Michael with one of their success stories in this Small Business Spotlight. This month we're talking to H.W. Phillips Landscaping. Mr. Phillips has years of experience with other landscaping companies, but when he started his own, he went to the Small Business Resource Center. He visited SCORE and SBAC for help. Let's listen to their story. Well, Howard's actually been in the landscaping business for the past 17 years, um, working for someone else, and he decided that he wanted to venture out and go out on his own. So we um, found out about SCORE and SBAC, and we came here in order to get the direction in which we needed to go. And we went through um, SBAC to get the loan to start the business, and uh, from there it's just history. And as you say, he does everything that you possibly can think of, plants trees, uh, he plants sod as well. Um, we are now going into the flower beds where you literally, I can't talk all that technical talk that he talks or, <laughs> you know, the other gardeners talk, but, you know, literally knowing how to select the flowers, something that I've never really paid that much attention to. But now that I go, even I'm looking here to see if somebody's edging the property correctly or, you know, looking at the different mulches that they put out and what have you. And it's a very fascinating business. And as far as the community impact, um, I think it's, it's been good for us because um, even though we don't have uh, full-time employees, we are able to employ a uh, person part-time. And then by Howard being able to take his skill set and assist with seniors as far as giving them a discounted price, as well as also sometimes making that our community give back. And then we participate also with the local schools. We've been able to assist with different projects that they've been having. So. Um, SBAC has been very instrumental. It goes way beyond, you know, H.W. Phillips' it's a community give back. It's a whole, um, I guess, circle that's being taken care of. It's having the people like we were able to work with, like uh, Mr. George. Um, we had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as far as getting information changed, getting that business plan, learning but not fully um, understanding the cash flow and the different financial components of a you know a spreadsheet um, but it was literally um, them advising us where to go and what we needed to do and so I would add, I would advise anybody to just just do it yes. um, you can't go wrong by just doing it there's someone there that is willing to hold your hand score yes. assist it with the first business plan of course we had to uh, go back and forth with them as well as far as you know redoing it um, but and then having tenacity to stick with it never let somebody tell you that your dream can't ever become possible. You heard it here folks. If you're thinking about starting a small business, just do it. The best way to do that is by visiting the Small Business Resource Center. They're at 111 East Liberty Street. 
or check them out online, sbacsav.com. I'm Leandra Michael, and this has been your SBAC Small Business Spotlight. Mayor Eddie DeLoach and local residents joined District 3 Alderman John Hall in unveiling the new sign for the Twickenham neighborhood on Savannah's east side. The sign is built on Goebel Avenue just north of President Street. It is the city's continuing effort of neighborhood revitalization. The priority for associations and residents to reestablish and preserve vibrant, livable, sustainable neighborhoods where Savannahians live with pride. Alderman Hall was quick to give credit to the local neighborhood association presidents. Under the new leadership of uh, Coco Pappy and the former leadership of Mr. George C. Barrow, they were all committed. They're all committed to doing great things for this neighborhood. And with their help and with the help of my colleagues on city council, Twickenham will not be forgotten. I see great things to happen over in this area. Twickenham neighborhood lies to the south of President Street, extending down to Gwinnett, Goebel Avenue on the west, over to Pennsylvania on the east. That'll do it for this edition of CitySpan. Be sure to keep up with your latest news and information in and about the city of Savannah. Our website has been revamped. User-friendly is the description. Check it out, savannahga.gov. You can also keep tabs on us on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram sites. We do have you covered. Our St. Patrick's Day Facebook site continues to grow. And well, tis the season. Plenty of pictures and info about Savannah's biggest and best festival. That's at Sab St. Pat. So for all of us at CitySpan, take care and thanks for making Savannah your home.